Uh, good morning. Um, in particular, good morning to uh, Mr. Steve Vallis, the uh, great organiser of this week for us. And um, also great to have Senator Bragg here with us again this morning. And, and both these individuals are obviously extremely passionate um, about blockchain DLT and our industry. Um, my name's Paul Stonham. I'm the general manager of DLT Solutions, DLT Solutions here at ASX. Um, but first, I'd like to call Donna Ingram um, to the stage, um, who's the cultural representative for the Welcome to Country. Good morning, everyone. Just wanted to apologise in advance that I can't stay for all the inter interesting discussions that, that are going to happen, but um, I'm sure you'll excuse me. I've got to get back to my day job after this. Good morning, everyone. It's my great pleasure to be here with permission from my elders to offer you welcome to country for the launch of Australian Block Blockchain Week 2022. A traditional welcome to country offers the visitor permission to be on the land, but more importantly offers the visitor protection whilst on the land. It gives me pride to represent my community in this important cultural protocol. It shows respect for and recognition to the unique position of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people in Australian culture and history. We are part of the oldest living culture in the world. We are gathered on the traditional land of the Gadigal, who are one of 29 clans of the Eora Nation, which is bordered by the Hawkesbury, the Georges and the Nepean Rivers. I'm an Aboriginal woman who proudly identifies with the Wiradjuri Nation from Central West New South Wales. I was born on Gadigal land and I've had the privilege to live, work and raise my four children on this land for most of my life. My family has grown and I'm now a proud grandmother to Aaliyah, Elijah, Kalila, Lakota, Jake Jr and Aki. My wish for my grandchildren is to grow up happy and healthy in a safe and inclusive society with access to technology to enable them to succeed in life. I acknowledge the Gadigal and all nations represented today. Their spirits and ancestors will always remain with the land mother earth and I thank them for their ongoing custodianship. I pay my respects to our elders, both past and present, and we must never forget the sacrifices made by our leaders to create a better future for Aboriginal people. I do this as a reminder and as a tribute to elders and those who have gone before us to fight for land rights, justice and equity for our communities. I extend my respects to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people from all clans and nations who are present this morning. I also recognise our non-Aboriginal sisters and brothers who walk beside us to share knowledge. I now offer you a warm and sincere welcome to the land of the Gadigal of the Eora Nation, wish you a safe stay on the land and safe travel from the land. I have the same wish for those of you who are viewing online. On behalf of my community and the Gadigal, I hope you have a great time at this event, the biggest blockchain cryptocurrency and digital asset festival Australia has ever seen. I hope you enjoy the online and real life events, including this launch, roundtables, live panels, fireside chats, a Maker's Day and more in Australia's Blockchain Week that activates members of the community across Australia. In closing, we remember that this is, was, and always will be Aboriginal land. Thanks everyone, have a fantastic time. Great, thank you Donna. Um, welcome everyone to Australian Blockchain Week. Uh, it's an honour and a pleasure um, to host it here at, at ASX. In fact, uh, if it wasn't for COVID uh, restrictions that are in the breakout areas where everyone will be having sort of morning tea, morning and afternoon tea and lunch times, um, obviously Steve could have sold at this event you know, many times over. So un unfortunately, there'll be some spare seats to, to here today, but basically that's sort of due to our, our COVID restrictions upstairs. And I guess we, we, all of us have probably heard how long Steve's wait list is, so it's definitely not that he couldn't sort of fill the seats. Um, again, seeing how much this industry has grown since we gathered here last year um, really reflects the real maturing uh, of blockchain and DLT uh, over the past few years, few years in particular for, for, for enterprises, I guess, like ASX and, and others that are in the room. Um, it's also great to see how passionate and committed you know, all of you are and everybody is online too um, about the industry that we're, we're finding ourselves in today and there's obviously some exciting stuff happening and Obviously, with the Senator's uh, FinTech inquiry and other things, um, we're really looking forward to the, the rest of this week and all the panel sessions and things like that. Um, from what can we can see here today with everyone, um, blockchain and DLT you know, brings people together. Um, for our part, um, we know our belief in backing this technology, everybody would have known about, knows about our chess replacement project. Uh, now, we've also launched our DLT as a service product symphony late last year. 
Um, and that will really allow other customers to use exactly the same technology ASX as use as, as, as a service, you know, developing innovative applications for either themselves, others, um, or industries in general, not necessarily all in financial services either. Um, there are a number of firms currently building apps um, on our platform. Um, we've had our first customer go live last month, uh, which is KPMG on behalf of the New South Wales government for their building assurance solution. And we're really excited to see some of the really cool stuff that, that others are currently doing in, in, in the test environment on the platform as well. Um, this week we'll hear from great leaders, um, prominent names in our industry, um, shining a light on this important and growing sector with enormous possibilities. And now without any further ado, um, I'll introduce you with the hostess, with the mostess, Mr. Steve Vallis, CEO, Blockchain Australia. Thanks, Paul. Paul has had to suffer me in recent times. Uh, truth be told, there's been a lot of work, obviously, to get this together. And uh, Paul, unfortunately, had to cop a little bit of that in the last week or two. It's very accommodating of, uh, of all the requests we've had here. So thanks for hosting us again, Paul. Um, it was uh, not even a year ago we, we were here and, and did this the first time. And uh, I think we had hopes and aspirations that things would move forward. And I think we're all surprised, truth be told. I think uh, things have moved faster than we otherwise uh, had hoped and when I spoke to Senator Bragg the first time and, and he said, where are we? Where is Australia? And I said, we are uh, filled with promise and opportunity. Um, the question is whether or not we can, we can be the country that takes advantage of that. Um, thanks everyone for showing up and uh, as you mentioned, Paul, uh, I know I'm a very unattractive five foot nine middle-aged man. Uh, I've never been more popular. Uh, my DMs... <laughs> My DMs have lit up. Uh, the reality is everyone's telling me everything's great. I'm, I'm enjoying it while it lasts. And I know uh, come Saturday, I'll go back to being an unattractive 50-something, five-foot-nine middle-aged man. Uh, interest has been extraordinary. You know, we, we set up a wait list, which has been the bane and the, uh, and the excitement around where we are here. A thousand people, we stopped at a thousand. We thought, well, we shouldn't get more than a thousand people to wait. So, you know, the, it's sort of a reflection of, of, of what sort of interest there is in this, uh, in this space. Um, Blockchain Week, just so you know, isn't a conference. Uh, clearly not. You know, we could have run a conference. It would have been in one city. I would have sold some tickets. Everyone would have shown up and everyone would have gone home. What we decided to do instead is reflective of where this industry is uh, and where it's come from. You know, we decided that we wanted to have conversations across the country. You might have seen a little bit of stuff I've put out on social media in, uh, in recent weeks and uh, it has been extraordinary. We have literally had millions of impressions and conversations that run all day, every day. Uh, no one's put a dollar behind that. That is you, that is everyone that's watching, that's everyone that participates in this industry. You know, it is people who, who are engaged by the content. Go figure, social media where you've got people who are engaged by the content, not, uh, not being driven by another algorithm. So that's what we've been, that's what we've been doing. Um, the week itself is, is meant to run in a series of parts, but the messages in today's message uh, is a mainstream one, one, one a mainstream moment. And, and when I talk about mainstream, uh, the characterisation that I have of mainstream is not capex spending and, and everyone agrees this is a great thing. This is now a conversation happening in all uh, levels of government. It's happening in all industry. It's happening in education institutions. It's happening at the startup level. It's happening everywhere. That's the mainstream moment for me. This is now pushed into the divide, which is everyone's talking about it. We have naysayers, we have those that are committed to it, we have the true believers and we have everyone in between. But it's a conversation now that uh, doesn't matter what room you're in, uh, you'll hear about what's happening. Uh, my role today will just be to give you context for people. Ultimately, that's what I want to do here, um, how these things are, are sort of connected. The conversation over the course of the next five days uh, effectively is us saying, let's have a balanced conversation. Uh, let's have a nuanced conversation. Let's, let's move away from the narratives that were 2017 and 2018 and 2019. It's not the dark web. It's not just criminals moving things across borders. Um, it's not too slow. You know, it's, it's not a nothing. Yeah, if you thought it was a nothing in 2017, you, you might have been right. You were less right in 2018, less right in 2019, 2021, 22. So the rally now is if you still don't believe this is a thing, that's okay. Own that outcome. You know, sit there and, uh, you know, plant your heels. I'll come back and chat to you in a couple of years and see if it's still the case. We think it's worth looking at. And in the rooms we're in, uh, what we're saying consistently and persistently is, just look at it. There's no marauding pack. You know, it's often the case people talking about blockchain. They say, oh, these blockchain people will come and do this and these blockchain people will come. There are no blockchain people. These are the blockchain people, the, the people who are building businesses, who have built businesses, uh, and are looking at better ways uh, to do things. So balanced, nuanced, and just so everyone knows, when we talk to government, we say, this is a community that is turning the lights on in every room we're in. 
There's no one hiding in a corner. We can kill that narrative once and for all. We want to work with government. We are leading the conversation with government. We're the ones that say, let's talk about scams. Let's talk about what this industry could be. Let's talk about investment. Let's talk about regulation. And often, clearly, five foot nine, unattractive, get asked to move to one side. Someone else will stand into that position and own that narrative. We own that narrative. That's ours. So, uh, you know, it was uh, with that that when I was introduced to Senator Bragg only a few days into my role as, as CEO, he participated in an event and to his credit, most politicians have veered away from this like, uh, uh, like uh, the plague. And he said, sure, I'll show up and I'll do that. And then when I spoke at the Senate Select Committee, uh, the Senator said, this might be important. I said, I think it's important too. And, you know, over the period of the 18 to 20 months, there's been absolute leadership with respect to this conversation. Uh, and it's been, it's been reflected in other tiers of government and people who've started before. But that's what that context was. It was someone who was willing to look at it, take the time and form a view that's not perfect, um, but there is great opportunity um, there. So, uh, you know, the aim for us here is to have lots of conversations. Uh, the sales pitch is, uh, this is an industry-led event. You know, we didn't go to government and say, please fund us. You know, my, my sponsors are the ones that have allowed us to do this. The reason why there's no ticket price is because the sponsors have done it. So on that top, sort of the four of the sponsors, then I'll start off with, I won't mention everyone, but we've got FTX as the name and right sponsor, Crypto.com as a community sponsor, and Independent Reserve and BTC Markets, strong supporters of what we do. And I'll mention all the other sponsors as well, but that's what we did. We said, should we do something? And everyone was silly enough to say, yeah, why not? Let's give it a go. So uh, grateful for the time, grateful for the commitment. Let's talk about it. Let's, let's decide whether it's a thing. And if it's not, we'll go to the airport and we'll travel somewhere where we think we might get better outcomes. But I'm hopeful this will be the place that we can, uh, we can do it. And with that, I'll introduce uh, Senator Bragg. And uh, I'm grateful for the support you've shown the industry, Senator. I look forward to uh, hearing your statement.